So my human is human story today um, is um, off of an op-ed piece that came out of the New York Times. It's a January 24th op-ed piece by um, a fellow named Sam Brinton, B-R-I-N-T-O-N, who writes about having gone through gay conversion therapy. So the title of the piece is, quote, I was tortured in gay conversion therapy, period, and it's still legal in 41 states, unquote. You heard that right. So what is gay conversion therapy? Well, it is a process, usually where teenagers go through, but sometimes younger adults, where they meet with a psychologist, um, that's somebody with a license, um, or they meet with a minister or somebody with a, polit- a religious affiliation, and that person, who usually the, the younger person, the teenager or young adult, is somebody who is struggling with um, same-sex attractions or gender identity, and the professional or the religious um, person works to get the younger person who's struggling to get them to understand that being gay or a lesbian or being transgender is simply a choice and that they can choose not to be gay or lesbian or transgender. And there are a variety of techniques. And so um, I'm going to read for you a little bit of the technique that Sam Brinton went through. Um, starting as a middle schooler in the early 2000s in Florida. It's a middle schooler, okay? So, you know, we're talking 13, 14 years old, maybe 15. And here's what Sam writes about what gay conversion therapy was like for him. Quote, For over two years, I sat on a couch and endured emotionally painful sessions with a counselor. I was told that my faith community rejected my sexuality that I was the, was the abomination we had heard about in Sunday school, and that I was the only gay person in the world, that it was inevitable I would get HIV and AIDS. Um, Sam continues to write, but it didn't stop there with these hurtful talk therapy sessions. The therapist ordered me bound to a table to have ice, heat, and electricity applied to my body. I was forced to watch clips on a television of gay men holding hands, hugging, and having sex. I was supposed to associate those images with the pain I was feeling to once and for all turn into a straight boy. In the end, it didn't work. I would say that it did, just to make the pain go away. Unquote. That is gay conversion therapy. Now, you may know that um, in the United States right now, there is um, an epidemic of depression, certainly, um, but high incidence of attempted suicides by LGBTQ teenagers. And why is that? It's because we still have many families, many people who believe that your sexual identity, your gender identity are choices. Yep. And because people believe that it's a choice, not something that's inherent, something that's so inherent to you, like whether you're left-handed or right-handed or whether, you know, you're you know, you're, you're, you've got this penchant for, to be a writer and, and, you know, and those writers out there that are listening to my voice right now, imagine this. I've just told you that's a choice for you to write. Nope. You don't, and I'm also telling you, you can never write another word ever again in a blog, in your journal, on a piece of paper that's I'm using your imagination. You can never write another word again. How does that make you feel? And the reason that you can never write ever again is that that's a choice on your part. You don't need to do that. And those of you listening right now, um, those who are artists, those who are thespians, um, those that are doing, you know, crafts, you know, we've got a lot of people that love crafts. All of those are choices. And you can never 
ever do any of those again, ever, because they're just a choice. How am I making you feel? Those of you where those things are important. I I went through this um, a couple of months ago um, with a group of people, and I had an artist. I mean, somebody who used paint, paint and canvas, and I said, you can never, ever again dip your brush into a palette. You can never again put a drop of color on a canvas. Oh my God, the reaction I got from that person. She was like, you're making me so incredibly sad. That's when we get into this thing about choice. It is not a choice. Whether you're gay or lesbian or transgender or bisexual, it is not a choice. You are not choosing that. It is just the way you are. Gay conversion therapy it is estimated, touches somewhere in the vicinity of 80,000 teenagers a year. Remember, it's legal in 41 states. And now here's the shock for you. It is legal in Minnesota. You know, I did not fully realize that. Ellie Krug, transgender advocate, da-da-da. I didn't understand that. I had thought... Now, we had passed a bill in the Minnesota legislature um, banning uh, gay conversion therapy. And I am advised that, no, that bill did not get passed. It is still, you know, in the legislature. I'm also advised that there is the ability, there is the ability for somebody to get gay conversion therapy in Minnesota. Now, I'm also here to tell you that um, uh, there are the, the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, and the American Academy of Pediatrics all oppose um, the use of gay conversion therapy. And that for therapists, um, the Association of Psychologists here in Minnesota, um, that it's considered unethical to engage in gay conversion therapy. However, the problem is that not every um, therapist has to belong to that association. And so, um, you know, um, it's possible for this to happen in Minnesota. In Minnesota. Sorry if I sound like it's a little incredulous for me, but it really is. And so I just need to tell you, um, we need to... We need to get that bill that's uh, currently in the legislature. We need to get that bill passed. Um, Representative Susan Allen had introduced it, um, and we need to get it passed. More importantly, you need to talk, please, if you would, with your friends and your neighbors about this gay conversion therapy stuff because people need to understand that it is harmful, that it is destructive, that it is not helpful, that it does not work that it causes young people who are being told that they are unworthy, it causes them to be further depressed. It does not help them. And I'm just sorry. It just doesn't work. Because who you love, who you want to have sex with, who you are in terms of gender, these are not choices. It is just the way it is. You know, and I know that many of us here in the Twin Cities, we get that. It's like, okay, Ellie, shut up. We've, you know, we've got it. The problem is there are a whole lot of people that don't have that, that don't understand that. There are a whole lot of people, and I bet you there are people in your families, as you're listening to this right now, you got Uncle Bill or Aunt Sarah or whatever. They don't get it. They don't understand that. They still think it's a choice. And you know what? That's a problem because they've got a niece or a nephew or they've got a kid somewhere that's going to come out as gay or a grandkid that's going to come out as gay and, and they're going to be thinking, oh, this isn't necessary for my grandkid or my niece or nephew. If they just get some help, they can get fixed. And as long as this idea that you can convert somebody 
with same-sex attractions into being straight, as long as that idea exists out there, you're going to have people pushing young people who are so impressionable and often who have no support of any kind, um, pushing those people to, um, to do things, to think things that just don't work. And then they get further depressed, and then they start to take in their lives, attempting to take their lives. It's just, you know, or go into addictions, all of that kind of stuff. Can't we just as society just agree that we're going to live and let live and let people be who they are? I just don't know. I'll tell you. Um, it's just quite disturbing.